All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, so I'm going to talk about the Global Telescope Network, just a real brief overview. You've heard some reference to it. It was established roughly at the same time as Skynet, um, with, and it was sort of developed to be this informal collaboration of small telescope owners and observatories that would do these gamma ray burst uh, follow-up studies. And it was, it was arranged that originally there were about 47 member telescopes and other organizations, and they would get these alert systems when there was a GRB. They would collect data and send their data into the AAVSO. And um, so it, and it, it's run out of Sonoma State University. And we have one telescope, the Gort Telescope, there, not on campus, but up in a slightly darker area, which was also on Skynet. Um, so this was sort of all happening at the same time. Now, a uh, little background here. I, I was in the classroom teaching for 10 of the past 17 years, um, and I taught some astronomy. And of course, like all of the astronomy educators, you're always looking for the cool projects and the, the, the ways to maybe access telescopes and, and stuff. Um, so I did some of that. Um, and I did, in that, in that time, occasionally run across the GTN, Global Telescope Network, website. This is a picture from there. Uh, and. It, I didn't find stuff that I particularly use in my classroom. But anyway, uh, about nine months ago, just through things, I was handed the Global Telescope Network, which was amazing. Oh my god, I have a Global Telescope Network to do something with. This is so cool. And, and I heard what it was about and all that. Um, and then I went and I started looking up the members. Um, this is from the site. On this page, you'll find information, current members, updated from time to time. That's exciting. You can, you can kind of tell by the look of the site a little bit. It's a little bit old. But I started looking through those um, that member list and realized after a couple of months, I was trying to track down. I called, I called all the people where there were contact members. And I will say my one big success from this past nine months, Burke, if those of you who didn't see the first talk in this session, Burke, he did an amazing talk. He's the big success from that. I was able to track down. Um, through news articles. There was a, a, a telescope on on the GTN, and I couldn't find it, but I found who used to own it, and news articles led me to, oh, it had been donated to a school in a different state. Okay, let me figure out where that school is and who that is. And, and then I found the teacher there, and, and he's here, and it's really kind of cool. Um, so we're reimagining it, and I think this is a really important part of this whole conversation um, this is, you know, my first attempt at thinking about how can we update this, how can we really bring this up to up to date and make it useful for the people that were members, want to be members, um, and, and what is that going to look like? So this is our Gort telescope up in the middle, and I'm glad to hear that, and it, it was on Skynet for a long time, and, but when I took over in September, and I've never, of course, built an observatory or connected these things. I wish I knew how to do it all, but I don't. Um, so I was a little bit glad to hear from Dan that someone got their master's thesis by connecting a telescope to Skynet, so I shouldn't feel so bad that I'm struggling a little bit. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, but we do have some some members, and I would like to build this up and really you know see how we can make this useful. Um, you'll see here, right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, I also was interested, I wanted to know what did the GTN do over, you know, it was established to do these GRB follow-ups and, and submit data to the AAVSO, and oh my gosh, this is amazing, there must be all kinds of publications, and there weren't, um, which is really interesting because in the other stuff that I work on, the Institute for Student Astronomical Research, where we have these student research teams doing research, and yesterday I talked about 120 publications or whatever, we, publication is important. <laughs> Otherwise, what, what did you do? How can we find it? Where? How are we contributing to things? Um, so it's a growing thing. I hope it will continue to grow. Now, a, a really large part of what this development and this growth will be like is um, we're on a, one of the big NASA cans. So there's no mistake university or NASA EPO group is on a big NASA cans with the micro observatory from CFA and JPL and all of these other people. And part of our one of our charges is to develop a framework for people going from using the micro observatory with their collection of six inch telescopes and their their objects that you can observe and their fifty thousand users who, you know, they're they're doing these imaging 
the images and they're they're starting to do little exoplanet studies, you know, and some of them are like, okay, this is awesome, now what? And so we're charged with developing that framework, which can be really an amazing thing for we're getting this into the classrooms and um, teachers who are, what do we do now? We've, we've made some cool pictures, we've done a little bit of light curve, now where? So we're developing that, that, that next piece. Um, the, and this grant that I mentioned, this NASA grant, um, sort of their overall arching goal can be summed up here, but providing a direct connection to the science. So we're, you know, it's a, it's a big team looking at some big questions. Um, exoplanets, of course, is a, a thing that everyone's trying to get into now. That's very exciting, um, and we can. So these are some of the places where we're, we're sort of connecting. How, do, how can we connect all of these these different programs, the Pro Project Panoptes with their DSLR cameras in, in the, uh, on the mount here. I don't know if anyone, some of you were probably here and you've talked to that team. So we're working with them, Micro Observatory, the Gort Telescope, and that anyone else that's in the GTN. That's sort of, here's, here's our observatory. Let's, let's work together to you know, have students, all students, and not just students, but the public, have access to Telescopes, if we can do this now, as we were all talking about. Um, so we're really thinking about, it's, it's almost like the, the beginning of a project. How do we organize this? How do we make this accessible to the public, to the educators, to the people who have telescopes? Um, so, you know, we need to build that network. I mean, there are already plenty of telescope networks. Like, we're not saying, hey, this is a place to build a network, but making sure we're connecting things in the right way and, and making things accessible. We've been hearing a lot from some teachers, like, I, I wanted to do this and I didn't know where to go and I, I need help getting my dome working or things, things like that. Um, and then, of course, working, this is an image from the micro observatory site, but really making materials. And, and building a framework, it's, it's really important, scaffolding that whole process. Like, here's the basic information, here's what the imaging, how you can do the imaging, here's what it means, how you can analyze data, all of these things, sort of making that accessible to everyone. Um, so, what we've been learning, and I'm sorry if there's a few selfies, so there's no selfies, good. Um, <laughs> there's pictures from, and if you're not represented there, sorry, I'll take more pictures. But um, just that community of practice, what we have really been finding, and I think a lot of people have expressed this, is Projects come, and they're amazing projects, and they get started, and then they go away, they disappear, people are stuck afterwards saying, now, now what, I don't know what to do next, or where do we go from here? And it's developing that community of practice, we found, that makes these things successful in the longer term. So this is, I don't have anything big and grand to say other than, you know, building that community of practice is really, key to all of this, and I think that we have an amazing collection of people here that, that is that community of practice, and finding a way to make sure we can keep that going and establish a place where we can continue to do the conversations is really key, um, and oops, uh, and that's, I'm going to help us catch up, we're running behind, I'm pretty much done here, but the, here's the Global Telescope Network, it's sort of, it was established, it's here, let's rebuild this. The way that we need it, the way we, we need it to function as educators, as people wanting to use the telescopes, etc. And thank you. We have time for questions. Oh, Russ. Yeah. Uh, so you talked about, I understand, kind of developing. Uh, little modules that would tell you how to do some specific type of research, you know, like exoplanets. Could you explain that a little bit? Sure. Um, well, and there's been a lot of conversation about this, but as a, as a teacher, as a teacher coming in, and, and Berg talked a bit about this and how those master teachers that uh, lead other teachers through, but as a teacher coming in, most teachers would have sort of no idea where to start their students, even just a random user. So you really need to develop, here's here's the beginning, here's a simple project. Take an image, you know, do some color processing or whatever. And we we insist in our Institute for Student Astronomical Research on publication. So we need to develop these little modules, these tools for leading through those whole processes. Um, and that's somewhat in development for, you know, we, we can put that up for our double star astrometry, but we would want to develop those for 
all the different areas that one you know, we have the students really participate in. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. Okay. So I'd, I'd be very happy to talk. You know, this is a, a really big conversation to get started, and it's been getting started here. But um, that's that. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, is there a, a way we should communicate with each other after this conference? Is, is there a listserv we should create? Is there a Facebook group we should create? There should definitely be, um, and that's I've been thinking about what that should, what that might look like. You know, if we all want to share emails, or I think a Facebook group actually might be a really great way to reach out to a really a wider audience. Um, I know it won't capture everybody. Um, that might be a great way to do it. Suggestions? I'm on a, a Google group for the planetarium <laughs> that I operate, uh, and it's very lively. And okay. it's great. You can search. You can search through past postings. Yeah, I Google think. groups. I, 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 mm -hmm. I wish that was a bigger thing, but I've, I've been involved in some of that along, you know, over the past few years, and it doesn't seem to be catching on too much the way that we might like, and therefore I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I guess it depends on us. Yeah, it depends on where everyone is and how you want to communicate. But honestly, I, I like talking to people and connecting people, and so I'd be happy to try to facilitate that and talk with anyone who's interested in talking about that. Um, and if everyone just wants, let's just have a big old email list of everyone just at least so you know who to contact. But, you know, we can start there. So, any other questions? Oh, let's thank Rachel again.